What's up guys? Welcome back to the Bonsai and YouTube channel. I'm Josh and today we're going to be taking a look at doing some remedial work on this juniper stock. So if you want to learn about that, then stick around. All right, so as mentioned, we've got some juniper stock here. This is very raw stock. It's never had any bonsai work done to it. So before we start looking at doing bonsai work, we're gonna need to do some remedial work. So if you're going to go out and buy nursery stock such as this, you need to change your mindset a little bit about when you bring this tree home, what you're going to do to it because seeing something like this in a nursery might be very impressive and you think, you know, you're gonna have a, a big tree or, you know, whatever your thought process may be at the time of purchasing the tree. But really what your thought process needs to be is how you're gonna fix all the problems on this tree before we start doing the bonsai work on it. So this particular piece of stock here, as you can see, it's so large, I can't even fit it all in the, in the frame. You know, it still goes all the way down here. But basically it's been grown on to get the thickness in the trunk. But as for all the stuff down the front here, there's been zero work done. So, you know, while it's all, you know, good that we could come in and just start putting little bits of wire here and there and doing some trimming and make it look okay. You know, that's the good thing about these junipers is you can make it look half decent in a single setting. But if we want to make a really good tree out of this, we're going to have to go through, we're going to have to make some sacrifices, cut this tree right back, start growing some new stuff. So that's what we're going to do today and then we're going to have a chat about that as we go through. Alright, so one of the first things that we're going to have to have a look at is all these tails here. So we've got tails growing off this thing everywhere and we've got all these ones underneath. So if we look at this one just here, if I pull this out, so see all that there, see how all that dead growth on there, that's a result of a juniper that hasn't had any light, okay? Well, in this case, a juniper branch that hasn't had any light, but if you don't give your juniper sun, that's what's gonna happen to the whole thing. But something like that, straight away, we're probably gonna get rid of that because it's not gonna be much use to us in the end, but you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 10 tails, okay? So if we were going to make this into a cascade tree, which is what it's likely going to be, then we're not gonna make use of all 10 of those tails. So we need to reduce, we need to find probably the one or two tails that are gonna give us the best design, okay? So we're gonna have one main cascading tail and then we'll probably have another one that we can do like a top layer of pads with, just give the top of the tree a bit of body, a bit of volume, and then have it taper as it goes down to the, towards the bottom tail. So that's gonna be our first job, is actually going through and having a look at the tails and see if we can find any, any in particular that have good movement or better taper, or any features that you know, might stand out to us. So by the end of this video, what we should have is a good base structure moving forward. We're not gonna have a bonsai, we're not gonna have anything that's gonna go into a show or anything that's gonna be remotely impressive. We're just gonna have a tree that's ready to start its bonsai journey after its growing journey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera in and we'll have a, a closer look at the base of the tree so you can see kind of what the trunk looks like, um, where it's coming out of the pot, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're just looking in at the back of the tree now, so we can see basically the trunk where it comes out of the soil here. So straight away, there's a few, few branches that stand out to me like this. We're not gonna be using this because it's going backwards towards the back of the tree, so I'm just gonna cut this here for now. Okay, so we'll get rid of that guy because he's not gonna be much use to us. And then obviously we've got this that's coming across, so we'll get rid of that for now. Kind of open this up. We've got another one here. And you can see that 
I'm leaving a couple of, a couple of little stubs because we're only just getting into the start of the design now of this tree. Well, the start of the structure anyway. And what I don't want to do is get to the end and go, oh, I really would have liked a gin just here or a gin just there. So just leaving those on for the time being, uh, something like that we're not going to need. So basically just first of all, I'm going to go through and find a lot of the stuff that's not going to be of much use to me, get rid of that first, and then I can come through and have a look at some of the stuff that is going to be more useful to me. So something like this one coming down the side here, it comes, whoop, nearly tipped it off the thing there, it comes all the way down the side, all right? So it's very sparse, it's not going to be useful, it's going to go back towards the back of the tree almost. So something like this, I'm going to actually cut off. Um, let me just get my big cutters here. I'm just going to cut it down further than what I might think I need for now, once again. Let me get rid of these. Because you never know, we might want to turn that into a gin later. But what I'll do is I'll turn the tree back around to the front now and we'll have a look at some of those other main tails and see if we can make a decision on which one's the best ones to keep. All right, so now we're back around the front side of the tree. We're gonna go through and do a few more rounds of elimination here of things that we're most likely not going to need and maybe shorten up some branches. So I can see already that up underneath, these ones up under here that have been shaded out, they're not really going to be much good to us. So I'm just gonna come up and cut a few of these guys out to begin with. And then that should start to, you know, thin out our options just a little bit more. And then I don't think that's actually it for all the shaded ones. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got this little tail at the back here. So if I rotate this around, we're not going to need all this length. So we can cut this back a bit. And this is probably a good opportunity for me to show you a technique that I like to do um, when cutting. And this is especially good with your branch cutters. So a lot of the time people will come in and cut a branch flat like this. But as you can see, what that leaves there is this really bright open end that kind of hits you right in the face. So rather than cutting flat, okay, if I turn it this way, rather than cutting flat with your concave cutters, I actually go in on an angle like this, okay? So, and usually I'll try and find a piece of growth. Let me just get rid of these little bits of growth around here to make this easier. Usually I'll find a little bit of growth at the end, okay? So like this guy just here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually cut on an angle underneath it. So now, if I turn that towards you, you can't actually see where that cut is. It's almost camouflaged. If I kind of tip the tree up, you'll see the cut up underneath there. But when you're looking straight at the tree, you've now camouflaged that cut because you've cut it on an angle. You haven't cut it straight at the viewer. So try and keep that in mind when uh, making cuts like that on your trees. Just a little bit of a side tip there for you. Now we're gonna come in and actually have a look at, have a look at these tails and see if we can find out which one is the best one in terms of movement, taper, all that kind of stuff. Now I know it's gonna be like super difficult for you guys to see up in there. So I'm just gonna have a quick look here for a second and see 
see if I can make a quick decision and then explain why I made that decision. Okay, so what I've been looking for first is basically the best front to the tree, so the best viewing angle that's going to be from the front. So to me, this is probably going to be the best viewing angle here because we get a lot of that movement up out of the, out of the base of the tree. And then we can make a little apex out of this stuff up here. This first branch, we can probably sweep along here and make somewhat of a, you know, a, a little bit of a sub apex there as well. And then we're going to want to keep one of these tails moving down the tree. So once we come out of here and we follow this line, we're not going to keep this one here because we're going to get too much of a straight line coming down here. So I'm going to get rid of these guys because they're going to be no good to us. That would have been a really boring line straight to there. Get that all cleaned up. So then our next option is this one that's coming down here. And that's actually coming off the main line, okay? So we've actually got good taper because it goes from this really big thick portion of the tree just here and then it moves into like a, a thinner section of what would have been branch here. And I mean, it's not too bad. It needs to be opened back up to light. It's very, very sparse and spindly, but we do have quite a lot to work with. And it does section off into uh, two separate bits there. But we also do have this, this big bit that comes off the top just here. Okay, you can see that just there. It comes up and over, and then it comes down this side. Okay, so that would give us quite a lot of movement. So we would, we would come out and then up and over, but I don't know if I would want that much movement in the tree. And the thing about this branch too is it's really, really thick and it's really set. So to get any kind of movement in that is gonna be quite, quite a bit of a challenge and it's quite straight from here to here, okay? So I know you can't see that because of all the foliage, but where that main line of that trunk runs down through here, let me just see if I can turn that so you can see it. Where it runs down through here, it's quite straight. We've got a big straight section there. So that may not be the best option for our tail. So I'm thinking this one just here is gonna be our best option for the tail that's going to be our cascade tail and maybe we can cut this guy up further and start building an apex from him. So let me get my bigger cutters here and I'm thinking I'll probably leave a bit on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flat cut this first. Okay, so we'll get rid of all that. And now that I've flat cut this, it's going to be easier to get in and do that angle cut. All right, so now you can see we've done quite a bit of reduction on the, on the tree. If we give it a spin, you can see around the back there, everything that we've cut off. So now we've got this little bit here, so I'm gonna have to trim that back a little bit. And we're going to keep that there. We'll keep that for now. I'm 
All right, so that looks like the main structure of our tree that we're gonna keep. So the next thing we need to do now is just go through and get our, get our bonsai scissors and go through and just give the tree a quick clean up. Um, get rid of any shaded foliage, any, any kind of foliage that's not really gonna be that useful to us. Because now, moving forward, I have cut a lot off this tree, but the thing about this tree is, is it's absolutely beaming with energy because you've seen how much foliage was on it. So it's beaming with energy, it's ready to go, but it hasn't actually put out on any growth yet. So we're just about to come into spring here now in Australia. So this tree will bounce back and when it bounces back, we wanna make sure that it bounces back into the spots that we want and that the tree is open, it's getting light, it's getting air. So we wanna go through and just do a little bit of cleanup. We're not gonna be doing a whole ton of wiring on this today, because our goal is to basically just set the structure. So we'll probably, probably just chuck some wire on this main tail, see if we can get some movement into it, just get it set a little bit, and then do some cleanup on the tree and I'll keep, I'll keep all these little stumps on it for now, just in case we do, do decide, you know, on a gin or something. But I'll go through now, I'll do a bit of clean up and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at putting some wire on this main tail. All right, so now that we've got the tree all cleaned up, we've got our main branches that we wanna keep on the tree. The next thing we wanna do is take this tail here and just put some interesting movement in it some structure to it, um, you know, get it out so that these lower bits are not gonna get shaded out um, over the growing season. And just try and get everything even light, um, even air, give it room to breathe, and try and get this tree as healthy as possible before we take our next steps working on it as a bonsai. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, take this thicker wire and I'm gonna go down and run it down the length of this tail here, and then we'll see if we can get some movement in the tree and get a bit more interest in it anyway, just in this main structure. I'm not gonna go through and wire out all the little stuff yet because we're gonna need to just leave this tree alone over the next season um, after we do this work, just let it do its thing, let it fill out, and then once it fills out, we'll have a a lot more choices for branching that we can use and you know when we come in and do our branch selection we'll have things in much better places and they'll be a lot more full at the moment a lot of the tails very sparse because it was shaded out because there was so much growth on the tree all the stuff on the outside was good but you know up closer up into here it starts getting really sparse so i'll put this on down the length of the branch and then we'll see if we can move it. We're probably gonna have to put guy wires on as well because with these cascade ones, as you bend them, the wire will only hold so much. The tails, because it's got so much weight in it, it'll always wanna go back down. So we may have to combine putting the wire on with some guy wires. But I'll go through and put this wire on and then we'll have a look at bending up the tree. All right, so this first little bit, you can see that I've anchored the wire off onto the dead wood here. And then we're gonna start going down this tail. And we're gonna to wanna to go down at a, a fairly even pitch. Wanna try and keep the wire as tight to the, to the branch as possible. We do wanna try and go in between all the little smaller branches the best we can. That's where that cleanup work really comes in handy. So when I came through, I made sure I moved stuff out of the way of where I thought the wire was going to go. There's one that I've missed there, so I'll just get my scissors and 
cut that one off. And we just want to keep in mind too, when we do this kind of bonsai work, just slow and steady, take your time, keep an eye on, you know, where your wire is going. Because at the end of the day, you'd rather do a really good job of this than rather, you know, rather than trying to be, you know, fast and impressive. I don't think anybody's really impressed by how fast somebody can wire a tree or whatnot. It's the end result that we're usually impressed with. So just take your time, nice and steady. Make sure that the the wire application is good. If you want to learn more about wire application, we do have a whole section of it on our beginners course over at thebonsidojo.com. So you can go over and check that out if you like. Now I've got a decision to make here because the branch actually splits off into two main junctions. We have the one that comes out over here and the one that comes out over here. So we've got to decide which one that we're going to run our wire out onto. But I'm going to keep going on this one down here because this one already kind of splits off and has a little bit of movement that way. I'm actually just going to get rid of this little guy here as well. As you can see, it's always handy to keep your scissors on you while you're wiring. So if there's little branchlets or whatever in your way where you're trying to wire, you can actually get them cut out. When you're doing your clean up, it's not always easy to tell what, you know, what's going to be in your way and what's not. Um, you have a rough idea, but you don't always get everything. Right, we're getting down to the bottom part of this branch now where this wire is probably getting a bit too thick for the application. So I'm going to actually cut it off just there. Just trying to keep that tree sturdy. All right, so now we've got our wire down the, the length of our branch. So you can see that up under there. Fairly even pitch all the way down, nice and tight. So now, now we can come through and if we rotate the tree, probably about there is gonna be the front yeah, probably about there somewhere. So now we need to start trying to move the tree into place. So I'm going to get, going to get some wire to use as guy wire. I'm gonna put my wire cutters up there and gym pliers because we're most definitely gonna have to use that. So given that roughly there's going to be the front of the tree, this branch does split off and it moves backwards first. And we've got our dead wood here. So keeping that in mind, I might try and bring it around underneath the dead wood here first. 
So we're just going to want to do small movements at first because it is quite a thick tree. You just want to make sure we support the tree really well. And just do little movements at a time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put my first guy wire on. I might actually go a bit thinner. I'm going to try and get that from there to there. And hopefully what this guy wire will do is help us as we're bending, we can put a twist on it and it'll hold that bend in place. All right, so I've got the tree lowered a bit more here so I can get a bit more leverage on this guy wire rather than trying to have it up higher. I've also secured the tree, and will secure the pot at least anyway to the milk crate here, so it'll stop moving a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna try and bend a little bit at a time and as I bend, I'm gonna pull and tighten the guy wire. And then as I bend, it's gonna hold it into place. So what I can do as well is I can try and hold this just here and pull this up a little bit, like that. Hold that there. All right. So, we've got our first bit of movement in there. I just want to see if I can maybe get a bit more. Just going a little bit at a time because I don't want to hear that snap. All right, now it's probably hard to see there, but we've got a big bend just in here. And now if we want to, we could probably bend this up a bit more just here as well. Let me just have a look at that there. I'm gonna just try and go a little bit more on this bend. I wanna exaggerate it a bit more. So I'm just gonna pull it up a bit more there. All 
All right, that's probably as far as we're gonna go with that one there. All right, so I've just stopped the camera and done a few things. I've lowered it a little bit so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing. And I also ran out and uh, got this block of wood here and put some screws in it to secure it to both the pot and the, the tree because the next bend that I wanna do here, we did our first bend here, okay? Now the next bend that I wanna do, I wanna still come this way, but I wanna come up a bit, okay? I wanna bring these branches up. And that's gonna be really hard to do without something here to push against. So I'm gonna put our next guy wire on and I'm gonna go down to here and I'm probably gonna go through the pot with it. All right, so we'll cut that off. Let me just grab my scissors. All right, so we're gonna wanna go through our wire down here. And then we're probably gonna wanna come through the pot there somewhere. So I'm just gonna put a hole in the pot here with my scissors. So we've got a hole in the pot there now that we can put our guy wire through. I'm just gonna give that some initial twists. that a initial bit of tension just there. Now, same thing as last time, I'm gonna try and bend this up a little bit and as I bend it, I'm gonna tighten the, the guy wire off. That way it'll hold in place. So. Might actually try and do it a bit with the guy wire first because the tree, tree's wanting to move a little bit. Even though we've got it secured down. When you're doing these big bends, it's really good to have two people so somebody can hold the, the pot for you. I'm just gonna shorten off my guy wire there. I'm gonna have to try and put my body on the pot. All right and see where we are there. If I move it to the side there, you can actually see how much movement we've got in this branch. That was straight down like that. I know you can't probably see too much from there. It doesn't look as dramatic. I might just see if I can go a little bit more here. Need to cut some more of this guy wire off.
All right. That should be about enough for that particular bend there. And that's probably about the, the front of the tree there somewhere. So now you can see, we're gonna have to, where the tree forks off just here, we can now move that one that way and we can start to go down with this tail now. So I'm just gonna step back and have a look. All right, so the next move I'm gonna to wanna to make is this bottom part of the tail here. I'm gonna to wanna to bring it back down this way. So I'm just gonna try and do this one by hand. Hopefully I won't need the guy wire because it's actually starting to get a bit thinner down here. This little branch here is probably going to have to go. Because when I bend this over, it's going to end up right where this branch is. All right, we're starting to get a bit more movement in the branch now. So I just wanna move this bottom one down and away from that. All right. So that's probably going to be it for the wiring of this particular one here. So I know from this side it probably looks a bit funky. But from this side, this is going to be our front. So what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to be able to frame these deadwood features, okay, with foliage. So we'll be able to grow, you know, something like this out here into a pad. We'll be able to have some pads out over here. We'll be able to move this branch out over into that section there. And we'll be able to do a lot more of that work once, once the, the tree kind of recovers from this work. So that's gonna be it for the, the wiring of this tree at least anyway. I'll um, bring the tree back up and move the camera back up and then we'll have a talk about what we're gonna do with this tree moving forward. All right, so as promised, not a tree that looks anything like a bonsai at the moment, but what it is, is set up for the future, ready for that bonsai work. So today what we've done is the remedial work after the growing phase. So the tree's being grown, we've got a nice thick base to the, the tree up here, okay, which is all that foliage that you've seen on the tree at the start of the video really, really helps with that, you know, growth of the tree. But now we need to come through and start eliminating, okay, and regrowing in the spots where we want to make that bonsai material. So we went through, we took a lot of the stuff off the back that was growing backwards. We found our front to the tree where we had the most interest, movement, wider space, that kind of thing. Then we went through and we eliminated the tails that we didn't think that we were going to use in the end design, the ones that have been shaded out, um, ones that wouldn't have had any interest, such as where this dead wood is here. Obviously, we've got our dead wood here. Uh, I haven't done full dead wood work on it. All I've done is just taken the bark off it just to prevent 
any more foliage from growing there because obviously we don't want the tree concentrating on that. I've stripped back a little bit of the bark. Um, that way it'll dry out as well, okay? So we can start that process, but we'll probably shorten these up a little bit. We won't keep them so long. But for now, it's acting as a good anchor for our wire on our, our main tail just there. So we went through, we selected this tail here. It had a good amount of taper from the thickest part moving down to here, which is good. We always want taper. And as we went further down, we're still getting thinner and thinner as we move down. So we've got good taper on our tail. We don't really have to cut back too much. Okay, we've, we've put a good amount of movement in it. So we've got our main structure to our tail now. So later on, as I said, for now, we're just gonna let this tree flush again. Okay, get a bit more full. Um, some of these branches will start to turn so they'll come back up the right way. Cause as you can see, this branch here is sideways at the moment. So, you know, once phototropism takes over that'll start to turn back up the right way. We'll let this fill back out and then next time we come back to do work on this tree, we can do some branch selection and then start, you know, placing where we're going to want our pads to be and our secondary branching and all that other kind of stuff. So for now, this tree is just going to go back out into the growing area. We're going to fertilize it. We're going to keep the water up to it. You know, we're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to let it get healthy again. And then in the future, we'll be able to do that second round of work. So what I hope that you've taken away from this video is when we get nursery stock like this, that's just really raw stock, don't have it in your mind that you're going to take it home and create a good bonsai from it straight away. Have it in, the, have it in your mind that you're going to go home, do some remedial work on the tree. You're going to get rid of the faults out of the tree, okay? Get rid of the stuff that you don't want and start setting that tree up step by step to become a bonsai. You know, this tree here, it's probably going to have, you know, another 10, 15 separate workings before it even starts to look like a bonsai. You know, it'll have its um, trim backs, it'll have its branch selection, we'll do some deadwood work. There's going to be a lot more wiring that's going to be done, over, uh, done on this tree over the coming years. So to get this tree to where it needs to be, a lot of work. It's not going to just happen in one single sitting. And... The other good thing that you can take away from this video too is just because the tree looks like this, so basically like crap, after you've done bonsai work to it, that doesn't really matter. As long as you know what you've done, you know what you've set, you know, for this particular tree, we know that we've set the main movement, okay? We've chosen our front, we've opened up the stuff that we want to keep now to the air and the light, so it's going to get, you know, healthy, it's going to move forward now whereas it was slowly dying off where it was getting shaded out. As long as you know what you're doing in your mind, then it doesn't matter what the tree looks like right now. If you do want to learn more, you can head over to the bonsaidojo.com and check out our Bonsai Beginners course there. And we're also going to be uploading more courses as we move forward. Give us a like, share and subscribe because that really helps the channel. Put a comment down below. What did you think about this work? Is this, is this the kind of work that you do to your trees or is this something new to you? So leave those comments down below and until next time, enjoy your bonsai journey.